Lesson 22, using the RAND function. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new console project and add a new file named main.cpp to it, as we did in Lesson 1. Often we will have a need to generate sequences of random numbers. There is, however, some difficulty getting a sequence of truly random numbers, so we will settle for a sequence of pseudo-random numbers. To generate these, we can use the C++ RAND function. Even though RAND is not truly random, that does not mean that it is useless. For most purposes, pseudo-random numbers will suffice. Early random number generators used a linear congruential algorithm. The algorithm consists of generating each number from the last by multiplying by a fixed number, adding another fixed number, and then taking the modulus of a third number. We are speaking of generating integers from zero to some maximum. This formula gives us integers from 0 to the modulus minus 1. The selection of these constants must be done carefully, and much has been written about the subject. Now, linear congruential algorithms generate a uniform distribution, which means that all of the numbers are equally likely. In fact, all of the integers are generated once in each period. The period is the length of the modulus. This is not too random, but it is fast and may be sufficient for some applications. The algorithm for the actual RAND function is typically a little more sophisticated than this, but the essence of it is the same. In this program, we call the RAND function ten times. Now, if we run the program twice, we get the same set of numbers. This is usually not desirable. To fix this, we can set the starting point for generating random numbers to a different value each time that we run. To do this, we use the time function shown here. This time function is located in the file ctime, which we have included here. Once we have the time, we pass that value into the seeding function srand. The value that we pass in is called the seed, since the rest of the numbers grow out of it. The time function sets the variable t to the time. We do not really care what the time actually is. We just want to know that it will generate a new sequence of numbers each time that we run. If we execute the program, we'll get a different sequence than before. If we execute the program again, we get another new sequence. The numbers that we generate run from 0 to rand max. The value of rand max may change from system to system, but you can find it in your system by outputting the value like this. For me, rand max is 32,767. This is equal to 2 to the 15 minus 1, which is pretty typical. Most of the time, we will want to generate numbers in a smaller range. To do this, we use the modulus operator. This program generates numbers in the range from 0 to 3. This concludes the lesson.